Hey everybody, this is Jen. Um, we're gonna start in like five minutes, but I just wanted to um, say hi and um, let you know that Jessica said to make sure you check your little chat box every once in a while because she's going to be giving you some trivia questions and then you'll be able to win some prizes. One of the prizes will be um, one of these uh, puppies, probably the one I make tonight. Um, I will will be one of the prizes so so that'll be fun but um just get yourself all set up and something to drink and you can have a ruler if you want you don't need one necessarily need one but um you can just get all your stuff and then we'll we'll start in just a few minutes
Okay, so it's exactly seven o'clock. So uh, I'm just gonna go through some really quick things first and then we'll, we'll get into making our little cute little puppies. So um, Jessica from the dog park said that uh, to make sure you check your uh, the box that you type in, the little message boxes, uh, every once in a while because she's gonna be putting up some questions so that you can win some cool prizes. So that's really awesome. So. I'm thinking that a lot of people are brand new at this, so I'm gonna go through some of the basic um, tools and um, some little tricks, and then we'll kind of get started. So we're going to um, work on a piece of foam tonight. I use this green foam because uh, you can see it better on the camera. Um, and then you always wanna work on foam or something soft because you, you want your needle to be able to go into something soft because we're gonna be poking in the wool and sometimes your needle's gonna go through the wool and you wanna make sure that it goes into something soft because you don't wanna break your needle and you don't want to ruin like a t your table or if you're doing this like on your leg, you don't wanna hit your leg. So you always wanna work on some sort of like foam. Um, the next thing is our needles. So needle felting needles are um, special needles that take wool and turn it into into felt. So if you look closely at your needle and if you're holding it and you drag this way, so hold it with like the tip here um, or the top there, the color part. And then if you drag your finger down this way, don't go back up. Um, you're gonna find the, there's these little indentations and that's what holds and grabs onto the wool and pushes it down and it compacts the wool and, and turns it into felt. So these were, I don't know exactly when these were invented, but the reason why these needles were invented was because um, they were looking for some way to make felt without using soap and water. So um, I'm assuming maybe like industrial revolution time. And then what happens is they take these needles and they put them in a machine and they make like a, they make like a wool, um, like inserts like for your shoes and stuff like that. So they um, they all like they push down and they make um, flat wool. So somebody one day decided just to take one of these piece, one of these needles and start sculpting wool. So it's pretty cool. So there's three needles. There's <clears throat> the green is the largest. The orange is the medium. And the yellow one is the skinniest. So usually what happens is at the beginning, we want to use the green one because in reality that's going to um, get your uh, wool to compact faster. Um, I usually don't use this one very much, but I did put it in your kit if you like to use it. I usually use the medium one, like basically all the time, because it's just the one I like and it, um, I don't feel like it's gonna break as easily. And, and I'll talk to you about that when we start poking our wall. Um, and then the little teeny one, the yellow one, that one will, um, is good. Like at the end when we're like attaching little eyes and things like that, um, this is better. And I'll talk a little bit more about all those needles when we are actually using them because it'll make some more sense. So I did have a ruler just for a scale for people to see because um, it is a little you know, misleading because you you know you get the, like a little ball of wool and you're like, well, how big is this going to be? And they actually compact pretty small. And I usually tell people to start small and then you can always add more on. Um, because if you take a huge big wad of wool and try to make it like this is only about two inches, it's gonna take you a really long time and you might not ever get all your wool that small. Um, but so that's why I just have this for everybody so that you can see how big everything is. So just to have these little guys here, and this is gonna probably take us probably like an hour and a half or so. Um, and then you can always keep working on it afterwards. So I usually do that. I usually do my class and then I will step away from it a little bit and then I'll come back to it. So I'm going to do the brown uh, dog. Um, 
but I can show people how to do this extra part here, like on the black dog. I can maybe put a little like um, spot or something on him too. Um, I think he, I think the black one's really cute. Um, but I will show you how to do that, and you can probably try to. You probably figure it out. It's really not that hard. Once I give you like the basics of needle felting, you can really make whatever you want. It's really fun. It's an easy craft to learn and lots of fun. And it's great because you get to stab um, wool over and over and it's very fun and cathartic. So we're gonna use this, um, I'll use the brown. And I gave you more than you're gonna need. You could probably make two dogs out of what you have. And what I do is I pull some off. So I just got some, um, and I, when you pull some of the wool off, you want to um, keep your hands far apart. You don't want to put them close together because you won't be able to pull your wool apart. Um, just kind of keep your hands real loose and just kind of pull and then the wool will come apart. So right now I am going to, I have it stacked about like if I squished, if I squished it way down, it's about like almost two inches but it isn't very long. It's only about seven inches long and it's a little bit thinner on the end. But what you are trying to get is we're gonna roll this up and you want about like the size of a large white chicken egg, maybe a little bit bigger. And what, like I said before, you always wanna make sure that you are working a little bit smaller than you think you're gonna need because we can always add more on. And what I do is pull all the wool and kind of roll it up. And this is a little small, I'll probably add some more. Um, roll it up because the tighter you roll it up at this point, the um, less you're gonna have to kind of poke. And right now it just looks like a little like burrito. I just roll, rolled it all up. It doesn't really look like anything. So right now I roll this up and it's about three inches by like two and a half inches and I'm, I'm kind of pushing down on this. And what's going to happen is this little ball of wool that we just made, it is going to it is going to um, get compacted when we poke it so that it gets smaller. So we're gonna poke, poke, poke. Does anyone, everyone hear me? Just checking, cause it looks like somebody says they can't hear me. Um, so what happens is when you poke the, the wool, the, all this is going to uh, get smaller and smaller. So the more you poke, the smaller and smaller your project is going to. Um, I'm just trying, I know, just trying to think like maybe for the sound thing, to may have to like just turn up your, um, okay, good. <laughs> I think that happened to one of my friend, yeah, um, what? One of my friends one time when she was trying to watch this. Um, so sorry about that. Um, so when you poke this and poke this and poke this, it's gonna get smaller and smaller and smaller. And it's almost like clay. You're, you're sculpting the wool with the needle and the needle acts as your sculpting tool, but it's also acting as like your glue because the more you poke, the harder it's going to get and it's gonna get really, um, it's gonna get uh, tighter and smaller and become firmer. So I was trying to figure out what Lots of people ask me like, how firm should something be? And I was just thinking like maybe like a, a soft like peach or a plum. You don't want like a hard like an apple. You want, you want to be able to squish it, but it's it's still it's going to be a little squishy. But then it'll give um, you it, you can't really squish it that much. So I'm squishing this guy pretty well. If I squished this, it's real. It's it's really small. So as you work, you're going to kind of figure out which um, 
density works best for you. All right, so I'm going to um, add maybe just a little bit more on here just to kind of give you an idea that it's easy to add, not so easy to take apart. All right, so even if I just add a little bit more on here, I'm just gonna kind of layer it on here <clears throat> to add some. And it doesn't have to be perfect because a lot of this stuff is gonna kind of disappear when we poke away. So you're gonna see like little creases and things like that and that's totally okay. So you can start with your larger needle um, and what you wanna do is you, you can, so I can see I don't like to really press hard. So when I'm going like in here and it's not really pressing in, that's when I go to a, the smaller needle. It should go in really smooth without any like pressure from your arm. And you, I, you can go straight up and down like a sewing machine. So up and down like this. You can also um, poke from like from horizontally, so left to right. You can poke in this way. You can also uh, poke into your bowl diagonally. The only thing that you um, don't want to do is once you go in, you don't want to move your needle a different way and then pull out because that you're, you're going to snap your needle. So two ways that you're going to break your needle. You can't get the wool into or the needle into the wool and you want to go all the way through so if I'm really pressing this in here and it's not wanting to go in I'm gonna break my needle so we'll put that to the side um, another way to break your needle is to put your needle in here and then snap it also some people like to like pull the wool with your needle that's not good because that's gonna snap your needle as well so I like to use this orange needle so I'm gonna go up and down and with this, and you can start whenever you feel like you're ready, um, or you can watch me for a little bit. Um, also, um, you want to work the whole piece right now. Right now we're just trying to get all these fibers to kind of compact into one another. And we want to work the whole surface. So left to right, right to left, keep turning it. Don't really have to be really uh, pressing hard, really gentle. You don't have to use any, it should take zero muscle whatsoever. Um, and make sure you're kind of turning it around in your hands and keeping poking. And once I'm done with this video tonight, I will, I'll make a, um, a link I'll put up on my I'll leave it up here on Facebook for people to continue to uh, watch it if you'd like to because you can like rewind it at that point when I post it up again afterwards or you can um, I'll send everybody a link for the YouTube video I'll put it on my YouTube page as well so you'll have access to it for a little bit after if you want to kind of go back so I'm not on my project I'm, it's kind of looking like a potato and there's lots of big indentations and things like that and that's okay um, I'm just trying to get all the like the edges together and trying to kind of start getting a form I try with this little guy I make a kind of like a gumdrop call it a gumdrop shape so a, kind of a rounded head and then a flat flattened bottom so once you kind of get all your fibers sort of like stuck together like they're not kind of falling everything's kind of unraveling and falling apart you can start thinking about how you want your guy to start looking your little puppy to start looking so right now I'm noticing like this top area is starting to be curved and then this area is a little flat I haven't even really poked this area too much so I'm gonna start poking this area making it flat but it's still gonna take me a while to get this how I want it and right now it kind of looks like a chicken McNugget chicken McNugget so I don't want to keep in one um, 
area too long because that might that area is going to get really felted and the rest of the areas are it's going to stay kind of fluffy um i don't want that to happen um also i want to make sure i'm going all the way through my wool because if you just work like on the top like this like do do like just not inserting the needle all the way in you are going to end up having like a really fluffy um actually a really hollow project all the wool kind of comes to the edges and then you have like a, a hollow project so make sure you're kind of going all the way through your wool and if it's like getting too small if you feel like you're like poking a lot and it's getting kind of small then you can add some more also too if you just keep working on one side for too long like if I'm just gonna poke this side like a ton I'm going to show you what happens. It gets really compact. So if you're going, if you're working from the top down a lot, it's going to smush this way. Boop. So that's why I want to kind of keep turning it because we do want to make it a little bit um, three-dimensional. Um, also, if you work on something and you're just kind of mushing from like the top down and just keeping poking, 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 what starts to happen sometimes is that uh, the wool gets stuck to your foam. So we don't want that to happen either. So it's a good um, habit to get into to kind of keep turning and working on your project all sides. If you feel like your little puppy is maybe getting like too flat, you can poke on this side, on the like the short side here, kind of fluff them up a little bit. If you feel like he's getting too like long and thin, you can work from the ends and he'll shrink up. So whichever way, it's, like, it's a little bit of physics. So if you just keep it going left and right, it's going to get long and skinny. Um, if you work from the sides in, it's going to get a little bit short and fat. Um, what else? What else? What else? I'm trying to think what else other things to tell everybody. It's a ton of information. And <laughs> I'm just trying to get people to... Um, Trying to give you all my per, like wisdom and knowledge here. So, um, oh yeah. So right now we're gonna make like kind of like a, almost like a gumdrop shape, and it doesn't have to look exactly like the one I'm doing. You can make it rounder if you want. If you want it like a more rounded like a gumdrop shape, you can. Uh, if you want to make it a little like sh uh, shorter, um, if you want to make it really rounded and like add legs you can do that too it's really up to you how you want to do it. it does not have to look just like mine and what I like to tell everybody my little hint is if you can master a couple of basic forms like a, uh, a ball a gumdrop shape an egg a cylinder and a cone you can basically make anything from needle felting because you can basically break everything down into those like five different forms. And this part is going to take us probably the longest just because we want this is our kind of our base and we want to make sure that this is nice and tight right now this is still kind of is still squishy and I'm going to kind of keep working on it for a few more minutes um, but as we keep working and adding pieces onto the onto this base shape then it will get tighter and firmer
Yeah. So <laughs> you're going to poke your fingers. I should have said, given everybody a few band-aids. So yeah, always make sure, and, and it's tough when you're learning through video because you want to look at the screen. Um, but try to maybe, um, I'm trying to think of a good way to do this. I don't know. Um, stop every <laughs> once in a while and, and take a look, but you always want to keep your eyes on your work. So I always tell people that this is a great project if you've got some friends over and you're just chit-chatting, um, or if you're listening like a podcast or something, um, but not great if you're like watching a brand new TV show. I'm always uh, doing this uh, uh, on the couch and I'm always asking my husband, what happened on the show? What happened on the show? Because I'm never paying attention to what I'm doing. And you will totally... You will totally hit hit yourself, and most times what'll happen is when you hit yourself, it'll just like jump away. Um, every once in a while, you'll draw some blood, but really, really, you um, it's not that bad. Also, too, you're gonna find some if you like get into doing needle felting, um, you're going to find some little like tricks to do so that you don't poke yourself. Lots of times I will, I usually get like a gel manicure and I'll put my fingers here like this. And then when I have to do something, I'll poke into my nail and then that doesn't hurt. So I found like little like tricks to help me out. All right. How's everyone doing? It's not like, I feel like bad, like this isn't Zoom. I can't see. How many licensed dogs? Jessica asks, how many licensed dogs were there in Abington in 2020? I have no guess. That's a lot of dogs. <laughs> I'm just going to assume that all 2,500 guesses, 2,500 dogs don't go to the dog park on the same day because that would probably be really crazy. <laughs> so this... Um, this guy is about two and a little over two inches wide. This bottom part is about like an inch and a quarter. So, and he's he is like he is still squishy like a like a dinner roll, but um, I'll, I'm probably gonna um, start with the next part uh, just to show you how to add some things on, and then we can keep like working on on the body here. Um, so I'll just a poke a few more times and then we'll we'll move on to the next step. We'll, in like one more minute. And don't feel like you have to be on the same page as me. You can always kind of catch up. Um, and like I said, I, I will share this immediately after we're done so you can go back and see any parts that you kind of um, need a review on. So I'm trying to keep these guys here so everyone can kind of see them. Okay, so for like the little nose part, um, we're going to kind of roll up like a little teeny Kind of maybe like a like almost like a little like a grape size is a good way to do that. And remember, it's going to get down. It's going to squish down a little bit. So don't um, 
Don't worry if it's too big. Now, if you feel like you need a different size nose because your dog is a different size, that's totally fine. I'm just trying to give a little bit of like, like what I would do, I guess. <laughs> so I just took like a little tuft. It's only about, oh, four inches, but it's like really like skinny. So it's not that, it's not that big. And then I'm gonna roll it up. And I like to tuck the sides in. For this, it kind of makes it a little bit like thicker. So roll those sides in. Like that. So this is like a size of like maybe a grape. One of those like big green grapes maybe. Um, it's probably gonna be a little too big, so I'm gonna pull a little off because I want it to be smaller than I think. And then what I like to do is I like to test it on here, and that's way, like way too big, right? So I'm gonna take a little bit more off. And there's kind of like two ways to attach this. So that's a little bit bigger. And right now it's gonna look terrible. And I'm telling you every single project that you make, it's gonna go through stages of like, oh my God, this looks terrible. It looks like a chicken McNugget. It's okay. You can, It will transform into something beautiful, believe me. Um, so I wanna make sure that there's a little bit of room here for like, I always put like a little heart here. So I'm gonna push it up just a little bit cause the eyes are gonna go here and then the ears. So that looks pretty good. So usually a little bit higher than half. And remember this is gonna shrink it down. So if you want to with this little guy, with this little nubbin, you can poke it on your um, foam first just to kind of get the Oops. Just to kind of get all the fibers together. And what I'm trying to get is we're going to try to get like a little bit of like a, of a, um, a round nose. We're going to poke it, put it on, and then we're going to add a little bit around the edge here. Add a little bit around the edge here. To help with the seam. I'm gonna try to see if I can stick him right here so we can see him a little bit better. And I chose a brown dog just because I think it's easier to see on the camera. The black, the black dog doesn't show up so great with this, with doing like details and stuff. And then same with like the white dog. This uh, brown works pretty good at like on. on camera. So when I when I attach the, the nose, like little muzzle here, I'm going to attach all the way around the edge. So you can watch me for like a f few minutes and then I'll work really slow so people can kind of catch up. So I'm going to go around the edge. And the reason I do this is because I know that it's a a lot of the wool isn't going to be attached. So if I wanted to move it, if I didn't like where it was, I could easily take it off. Also, I don't want to push down on the front, like the, the tip of the nose just yet, because then that's going to flatten that area. It's because I want to keep it fluffy. So I'm going to attach around the edge, then we'll talk about like sculpting this, this area a little bit. I'm gonna go around the edge again. And I kind of call this like tacking, like if you're sewing, you just kind of tack your pieces together. So same kind of idea, we're just making sure that it looks good. Okay, it looks a little big, but it's gonna get smaller, right? Remember, it's still very squishy and we can smush it down. So I'm gonna start 
attaching it all this way. And you can go all the way in to the wool of the body. And you, it might indent a little bit. You see how this is kind of indenting here? That's okay, because we, we can fill this in. And then if you want to, once it's attached and you kind of like it, then you can kind of start sculpting it a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to poke the, the sides down a little bit. Oh no, Larry, don't worry about it. I can, I will, um, I will um, keep this up for a while this video up on this page so you can look at it and I'm going to put it up on um, YouTube and I'm gonna send everybody a link so you can always come back and check it out so Larry all we've done so far is made a little a little ball little meatball and we're just adding the nose oh wow Jessica are we doing um, closest without going over prices what prices right uh, rules <laughs> The closest without going over. Hi. All right, Jane, that's awesome. Okay, so I'm going to poke like down the sides like this. On this, like that. There you go. Yeah, prices right rule. Prices right rules. Closest without going over. All right, so I'm like poking down the sides here, and I'm gonna try to make the the muzzle kind of go up a little bit. So I'm going to use my needle to kind of like poke and push up, because I want the nose to kind of like like stick up. I think it looks cuter that way. Let's do that way. So Laria, I'm gonna, so people can like catch up a little bit. Um, all you're gonna do is take like a, like the size of a, um, whoa, um, you're gonna get a little a size of a, a, like a egg, a white, large chicken egg. And you can, you're gonna roll it up and then you're gonna start poking your wool with the orange needle. And you wanna go all the way through and kinda of keep turning and poking. That's how you start. Oh, that's awesome. Amazon gift card. I should have guessed. <laughs> so if you're noticing that like when you put your the nose on and the, the forehead kinda of popped up a little bit, you can just poke this that back what starts to happen is when you start attaching pieces on um, the other wool might get displaced and that's okay you just, it's so it's almost like you got to keep working on your it um, working on your project you keep adding a little bit of it at a time, but then you gotta, because this isn't completely done, you just gotta kinda keep working on it and working on it um, so that it all kind of blends together. And I, I say this is definitely an art and not a, like a science. There's no um, you know, real pattern for this and you kinda gotta figure out what the wool is gonna do and you kind of have to figure out like how tight you want to make your project. Um, you also want to make, um, you also have to think like, um, you also have to like um, just kind of 
um, fix things as you go along. And that's totally okay. I do that all the time. Yeah, so if you want to add a little bit in the bottom, you totally can do that. That's usually what happens to me is I get my projects too short and, and stubby too. So what you can do is, this is why needle felting is so forgiving. You can roll up a little bit. And then just put on and just attach it. And what I would say to do, same thing. I always go whenever I attach anything, I just go around the edge. I don't know why. Um, go around the edge just so it kind of lines up. And then you can kind of poke it right on like that. And then it might take you a little while to kind of get it the same density, but that's okay. So you can just add like that. And then too, like if you wanted to um, like add, at this point, like you could add like paws and stuff like that too, like after your heart, if you wanted to. Um, once we make the ears, you'll see it. Yep, yes you can, Jill. You can just, yep, you can always just add um, wool to it makes it like puffier. Yep, that, um, I call this, this would be called an additive sculpture in the sculpture world. You're always going to add to it. It's really hard to take anything off of this once it's felted together. Um, you know, if I wanted to make this guy smaller, I couldn't, I can't really, I mean, I can rip the wool off, but it's going to look like terrible. Um, also depending on like how hard you felt, like how dense you get your project, um, the wool, the fibers get so like contained together, mingled together that you can't get pieces apart. Like I had, I wanted to take a flower off of something I made and it was so felted in there um, that I had to use pliers to rip it apart. Yeah, you can, Jane, you can do whatever you want. You can totally switch it up. I'm just, you can do black nose, you do white nose, whatever you like, it's totally up to you does not have to look like mine at all. And I'll get this guy. And you can make your ears different. Like if you want to look to maybe more like your dog, you could, if it has like little um, more pointy ears or something like that, you can do that too. And I'll talk about kind of switching that up when we get there. Okay, so I'm not gonna worry too much about this anymore, but I just wanna show you how like add, add stuff on there. So his nose looked pretty good. His nose, his nose looks pretty good. Um, also another thing you can do, like if you want to work on this nose a little bit more and get it a little firmer, this is still pretty squishy. So something I like to do is I like to kind of hang off the side of the foam here so that you can go through the wall into the foam so that you can really get it felted. Sometimes if you do that though, what starts to happen is your nose kind of grows, but all you have to do is go this way and poke it back in. Yep, so you can use do a different nose. Um, you can use like the brown for the eyes if you wanted to too when we get to that point. Um, there's no wrong way. Somebody, I put this on Instagram and somebody said, it needs paws. And I'm like, well, I don't want to have paws on mine, but you can put paws on yours. <laughs> okay. So once again, it's still very squishy. It's okay. I'm still working on it. You're going to notice there's little holes and stuff in it. It's okay. And we're using like kind of a big needle right now. So when we go and get the smaller needle, um, it'll help. So if you're noticing too, like there's like a crease between the two, between the nose and this, um, the body, you can just take a little bit of wool and lay it in between the, the crease. 
and poke it in. so that you don't have such a big kind of crease. It looks, doesn't look like you just stuck the nose on. Okay. So now, what I usually do, whoop, come back here. Is um, I'll add the eyes in the nose and then we're gonna we can add like a little spot around the eye so if you want to if you don't like the black dog you can um, you can do the eye you can do the um, like the white part so if you wanted to do something like add a little weight on there like a little white like spot on the top of his head we'll do that we'll do that it'll be fun you can just take a little bit, and I call this like painting now. This, when we add wool onto wool, and it's just going to be like a decoration, it's not going to serve any purpose for, but just to color the wool, just take a little bit. And you can just kind of poke it on. And there might be areas where the wool's a little um, thinner in some areas. but you can just always add a little bit more. So I'm just gonna bring this to the back. So with the um, black one, I just kinda left it like that. I mean, and you don't have to keep it, you don't have to do that, but I just kinda left a little fuzzy. So if you want to add like a little like spot or anything like that, you could just do, you can just do that. Just do something like that. Okay. I'm actually gonna do, hold on. I'm just gonna do the whole eye. Let's do a little trick here. And when you're putting wool on top of wool, it's just like a, a color. You don't have to go all the way into the wool. You can just kind of work on the top just to kind of get it to incorporate. Okay. And you just kind of have to go back and like fiddle with it. All right, so eyes. So with, I'm gonna use the black to make little teeny eyes and I am, you're going to make the teeniest little eyes, especially because if you're doing like white, um, the contrast between the white and the black is so strong that um, you you want to use so little. So I am talking like so little, like a little sesame seed. Little. So that's all I have right now, and that's gonna make two eyes. And I roll them in my fingers. And I could make them a little bit bigger if I wanted to, but that's, they're just gonna be like little teeny. And I usually put them kind of off to the side. A little off to the side above the nose. And then this, you can use your yellow needle now if you wanted to, because it will probably be a little bit easier. And, because it's a skinnier needle and it's gonna go to between the wool fibers you've already attached. So, and I'm not even pressing in very hard. I'm just really like tapping the surface of the wool. Just, you know, so that maybe those first few little barbs get stuck down in there. So here you can use your needle to kind of direct the wool, kind of poke it in. Just, you can use your needle to help you direct things as long as it, your needle is not embedded in the wool.
And if you're feeling, like, I feel like this right eye is a little too, like, oval. So you can take... Your needle and work like on the surface almost and just kind of poke the wool okay now I'm gonna use a little bit of brown to make his spot but before that I'm gonna do a little black nose so say, same thing this time with the nose, like we just did with the eye, but you'll use a little bit more. And instead of rolling it in my fingers, I'm actually gonna kind of like fold it. So, kind of fold it and fold it. And just like a little teeny bit, like the teen, like so small. It ends up being like maybe like the size of a Tic Tac. So just a little bit. And then I'm going to put it on here. That's actually probably still a little too big. So I'm going to take a little bit of it off. Mm. Uh, how, all right, trivia question. How old was the oldest dog on record ever? I'm gonna say 25, but I don't have to win. <laughs> it's probably older than that, but. All right, so I'm just gonna put it on there. That's actually kind of big. Um, so what I'm gonna do, sometimes when things are a little too big but you wanna get on there, I'm gonna like poke it a few times. There you go, that looks cute. So I poked it a few times. Yeah, it's about a little bit bigger than a Tic Tac. Put it on there. Attach. So when I'm attaching, I, I'm still using my yellow needle. But I'm really gonna poke it in there. If you want, so this is like a little dot. Um, if you want it more like um, upside down triangly, you can kind of pull. And what, once again, just be careful. You can kind of direct your wool kind of to the sides. And then I'm going to pull this down. And then you can kind of poke each side, and this will help us when we go do our little heart too. Poke each side so that it can kind of make a little little triangle. And you can kind of poke from the top. And then you can poke it down. He's really cute. He's really cute. <laughs> um, if you want to, before I get to the eye, um, you can add a little smile if you want. And what I like to do when I put a smile in is sometimes I will take, I'll take like a bigger needle and I'm going to draw a line with a needle. see if I like it and then if I do then I can put the the wool on and sometimes I kind of like that indentation I'm gonna like fill that little indentation I made with a little bit of wool and when you make a little wooly smile like that you really want to make it really teeny tiny and I like to pull the wool and kind of um, twist it and kind of makes like a little baby piece of yarn and I know it's a little too big but we're gonna lay it on here and it's gonna sink into 
the wool. And I usually start in the center because that's what I know and I want it right there in the center. Now I'm gonna kinda go out to the sides and I try to bring it up so it looks like a little smile. And if it looks too big, you can poke it a little bit more. So it sinks in there a little more. If it's just way too big, you can just pull it out and start again. Sometimes I use my needle to like push the wool and then kind of poke it in. You can also do like a little like line here if you wanted to, so it looks like it's the little front of the muzzly part. It's up to you. Okay. These really cute. These come out so cute. Okay. I can't wait to see everybody's. So make sure you like post it on Facebook or um, to the Abington Dog Park for sure because how cute will that be? Everyone will be super jealous that you made one of these. All right. So I'm gonna add a little bit around the eye. So his little spot for his eye. Um, I'm gonna do brown again. But what I do for this spot, so same thing, like I'm just painting. So I just want a little bit. And you can do this a couple different ways. You can kind of wrap it around, but I'm kind of lazy. And so I just drop a piece on here <laughs> and I will just start poking. But what I try to do is I try to pull it away from the eye. So I'll kind of poke, I'll, like, I'll go like this. I pull it and I poke it. And I just try not to, to get it in the eye. And I go like this. And I go all the way around. But there's lots of different ways you can do that. It's probably an easier way, but I don't know why I just kind of do that. Cause like, I know I can, I want to try to get it right up to the black part of the eye. So that's why I do it like that. So I just kind of throw the wool on there and then I just kind of poke it around. And then if it's not like big enough or you want like a different size, you can always add a little bit more. You can also, um, you know, take some of it. You can just kind of tear some of it off with your hand. Some of the browns get in the black. You can also put the brown down first, or what I, like the spot, and then stick the the black. Um, the reason I just like to get the eye in there, just so I know where it is, and it kind of gives your dog some personality when you get those eyes in there. Kind of starts to come alive. And if you like eye, the little like the little dot for the eye, like falls into your wool or it gets too small or whatever, anything that happens, you can always just add a little bit more on. Also, you know, if you didn't like how this looked and for some reason like you couldn't get it off or you know it doesn't look good, you can just take some more wool and just, you know, you could just take wool and just lay it over top and you can hide the whole thing. It's 
it's pretty amazing. All right, so I'm gonna add a little bit more up here for his little doggy eye. And then I'll take a sip of water and then and then we're gonna start working on the ears. Which is like the most fun part. <laughs> Sorry about that. Does anybody, um, you know, feel free to like type out questions and things like that. I have um, this kind of good enough, uh, good enough tonight, set up well enough tonight that I can see um, comments coming in and stuff like that. So please feel free if you need any question, if you have any questions, or if you need to um, I'm just reading Jessica's post. 32 years old. That's crazy. Um, but feel free to put any questions up and I'd be happy to answer them. That's, that's crazy. There Do we know what kind of dog it is that lived to be 32 years old? Hi. Oops, I just spoke here. Okay. Okay, so now for the ears, um, don't worry about getting your ears perfect, especially for this project, because usually what I tell people to do, especially when you're making ears, especially like at, on a project like this, like a beginner project, oh, don't worry about getting the ears perfect because one of them is gonna, we can kind of make flop down a little bit. Also, you can, you could, you can poke this in here so it's kind of folded over. Um, also too, I kind of feel like he, he's a little bit silly, like floppy ear, whatever. So you can totally make it like however you want. So don't worry about if the ears are like different sizes. It's totally okay. And it'll look cute if they're like little bit different sizes okay so for the ears and you can do different color ears if you want like if you want to have black ears on a brown dog that's totally fine so for the ears I take how big is this piece oops I, oh sorry everybody <laughs> I take about so this is about four inches, and I'm about skinny, skinny, skinny. And actually, I feel like that's a little too fat. So maybe about three inches, but skinny, skinny, like about my finger. <laughs> and then um, I like to fold it in half. And the reason why I like to do this is a couple of reasons. You can, um, it's a little bit thicker. You can kind of pinch the top if you want to have like this. You can also use this little folded area to be like the center of your um, ear, like that indentation part. And we're gonna leave this end, this kind of fluffier end loose this way if for some reason you're ear is too long or you don't like the size of it or whatever you can pe peel this off also this will help with attaching when your wool gets kind of like too too hard like if you've poked it way too much there's not enough like fibers loose to intertwine with other fibers so it's kind of nice sometimes to have sort of loose fibers so that that they like intertwine with one another so this ends up being like quite small. So it's about like two and a quarter. Um, and I'm going to 
Polka down here first. You, if you want to, you can make both of them at the same time. I usually don't um, anymore because I feel like I stress myself out. So don't get stressed about this. So this is a good like learning right here because if you're poking a lot, and this isn't a lot of wool, it's gonna get attached here. So keep kind of flipping it over. And um, the thinner, the thinner you make it, the floppier your ear will be. So sometimes if you're re really daring and you want to, you can kind of hold it like this, hold your ear like this and poke this way to keep your eye on your work. Kind of fluffs it up a little bit. Remember, keep this loose. If you want this to be more like indented, just really start like kind of working on the center. So when you like poke one area for a while, it'll sink down and the other wool like around it will pop up. And then I always test it too. Kind of looks, <laughs> kind of looks like a um, bunny ear. So what I'll, what I usually do is I kind of take, poke the top down like this so that it's rounded out. And that looks a little better. And you can work from both sides. And I do have to say, I think this is maybe one of the best ears I've ever made. So there you go. And then if you want to, like these guys have, it's like real kind of thin right here and that kind of makes it floppy. And you can make it as thick as you want. Or you can keep it real loose, it's up to you. Um, I, yeah, Bernadette, when you order a kit, you get um, a code. And you don't always have to buy a full kit. You can just buy a like a, the wool and you get the code that comes with it. And then there's all sorts of like videos. But there's also like tons of videos on online too. Um, if you want, you can look at the, those too. Um, and everybody teaches like a little bit different way. So it's kind of cool to watch what other people do as well. So what I'm going to do now is right in the center here, I'm going to have white and I'm going to add just a little bit. Remember when I kind of painting this again and a little bit goes a long way. So, I'm take this. Sure. Oh, I can't think I'm off screen. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Um, I'm gonna poke in here just a little bit. You should do this on your phone, but I'm just kind of doing it in the air. I'm just gonna put a little bit in here and then if you don't like this extra part, you can tear it off. I usually just hold down this. And then usually like a pinch right there. And what I'm gonna do right now is I am going to attach right here. And I'm gonna really um, kind of poke it together because I, I want that kind of floppy here. So I'm gonna poke that. Okay. 
It's, um, so I'm not really hearing too much about the next year because I don't really care that it looks exactly the same. And what I like to do, you want to attach something. I attach it from the back so that there's no real like attached part in the front. So I put, use that extra. You can tear off if you want to, but you don't have to. I go like this. I like to use it to attach. I just sink it right in. it a little bit in the front. If you feel like this attachment is too like loose or weak, you can just take, let me see what color you want to use. I use the white. Um, you can add a little bit, just like we did when we used the, um, when we attached the nose. You can just go right around like this and it kind of gets strength in it. it, strengthens it a little bit. Now the reason why when I put, and I, sorry I got distracted when I was telling everybody how to do this, so when I put the white in, I usually add inside the ear. What I usually do is I will work this way um, horizontally. I don't go straight through because this will happen. I'll show you. It comes through on the back. So it's up to you. I mean, if this really bugs you, then you can put a little of whatever the ear color is over top. Sometimes it looks a little natural. There's another little color there. It, um, it's kind of up to you how you want to, to do that. But um, that's why I, when I put a color inside the ear, I usually attach it by kind of working like horizontally and not going through, through the wall. So if you wanted, so I'm just gonna kind of leave this like hanging like this for a second. I'll work on the other ear and then we'll see what, what happens. Um, and I'll show you how to kind of like bend it over and make it stay a little more bent. So now we're gonna do ear number two, so exciting. <laughs> it's kind of good because if you miss something, you can always go back and work. Um, and learn kind of how to do it again when, you, when you're doing something that there's two of. So that's kind of good. And right now, like it's a kind of put my finger in here and went like this just to kind of make it a little more indented there. Another way to do this is turning on its side and just working just this back kind of area and that does a good job too of like getting your ear a little bit like indented like a little um it was like a little boat in there. Um, so I know all of you have dogs, or most of you have dogs. And um, what I would say is to keep your felted creation somewhere because your dog's going to want to eat it and play with it. So I have a funny story that one time I taught a class on how to make um, bunnies like right around Easter and everybody 
was, um, and then um, this woman had made like a bunch of bunnies for her Easter table and they had all left and gone to church and she came home and every bunny was ripped off the table and like ripped apart and shreds all over the floor and she was like my dog never does that and I guess it's like a little dog so it got up on the table and like just ate and just destroyed every little like wool bunny that she, this poor lady had made and they take a long time so I would I felt bad for her <laughs> And I think like cats think like they're, if you have cats, they think they're like toys for them. Right. So if I want to get like real Fussy, I could try to make them the same, but this one's a little bigger, but that's okay. So I'm gonna put a little more weight in there. And like before, you can go straight through if you want, or you can go and poke a little horizontally. Totally up to you. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yes, the flamingo. I think you, did you tell me that? I can't remember, I think that sounds very familiar. All these like things are popping up in my head to like remind people what to what to do like I should really have a checklist <laughs> but if you run into problems afterwards you can always just send me email or you can email um, message me on Facebook or Instagram too so wherever Oh yeah, that, see, I remember that, see? <laughs> and too, that neck had a wire in it too, so that would have been bad. Okay, so, still looks good. I mean, they totally look like bunny ears, so I'm gonna like fiddle with them once they're on here. And sometimes it's good to get, take your ear and then attach it and see how it looks, and then you can kind of fiddle with it when it's on your project you get a better sense of what you want it to look like. So I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit. So you can see. So same thing, I'm gonna attach kind of from the back. And then I have them like almost like right up top. So you can put them closer together if you want. You can put them farther on the sides and they can kind of like turn them and you can have them droop down like that. Totes, you know, whatever you want your doggy to look like. I envision this dog like in a car with its head hanging out the window. Okay. Put stab it in there. And sometimes I don't really, like once it's on, once I'm trying to get it on here, I don't really care like at the, right at the beginning if it looks like per perfect or if it's like, it's all, it's really messy here where I attached it. So I know I can like go and fix it. So lots of times, I won't worry too much about what it looks like when I attach it right at the beginning. I'll use a little brown. It's very like loose there. You can see all like where the um, needle has brought the fibers down. So Okay, so I still think this really looks like a um, bunny ear. So, click this. And you can use whatever needle. I'm using the T3 
teeny needle right now, but you can use whatever needle you like. Don't get hung up on what needle to use. Just use what needle feels good and, and you like. All right, so I'm going all the way around because I want to make sure it's attached. Okay, so I probably need some more wool there. And like I'm noticing that this ear is really making this sink in, my body in. So I'm going to probably poke this a little bit more because it is still very kind of squishy. So I'm going to go and I'm going to poke around a bit. And you can kind of firm it up a little bit. So if you want, now this ear is way smaller, but if you want, if you want to turn your ears and have them go down the side like this, so you can turn your ear and then you can poke it. So remember like earlier I said, your needle is the glue. So if you just, poke it like that and then down. It might take a little bit, but see that really went like straight down. So I'm gonna leave this guy, this up, one up, one down here. And I will go, so now the smaller needle and I'm just gonna kind of go and shape him some more. So after I put like a, something on, like if I put like another ear on or whatever, I'll go through and kind of do some shaping. And you can really poke like a ton in almost sometimes too much, but I want to kind of smooth this out a little bit. Oh my God, it's so cute. I just love these little doggies. Yes, you always break a needle. I even I break. I still break needles. And what starts to happen is once you get better and you don't break needles so much, then they start to get dull. So um, you'll be like poking along and poking along, and you'll be like, my wool is not compacting at all. And that's probably when you need a new needle. And sometimes you don't even know until you get another needle. And then you like compare them side by side, like needle poking, and then it's crazy how much like a fresh needle can help you out. Okay, so I'm just poking around here, and um, next we're going to add the tail. Um, I was. I follow this one Instagram needle filter and she makes like these crazy realistic projects and you think like oh you know she does all this work and she's does a great job and you would think like she wouldn't poke herself very much she showed her fingers and they were all like all of them were like sliced up it was crazy I was like what so you can make so we'll go back to the tail my little tangents here um, you make the tail, I make the tail, just, um, I'm going to kind of make like a little cylinder, and you can make it really long if you want, if your dog has a long tail, if it's a like short little tail, you can do that too, you can make it just kind of pop up the back if you wanted to, um, I kind of like have it go off this, this side a little bit longer, 
the tail is pretty easy breezy and then the last thing we'll do is um, the last one we'll do is the heart oh the orange one sorry that's my favorite <laughs> that's my favorite um, So my tail is about like two and a half inches, um, but you can make it as big or as small as you want. So the tail is like super duper easy. So that's why I like to, I kind of build up to a point and then we, we kind of end with the easy stuff. So, whoops. They like to run away with, run away, so. So I'm just gonna take like a long skinny bit. So about like six inches, it's skinny. And then what I wanna do is I'm gonna roll it up. I'm gonna roll in a diagonal. And if you notice, this wool is pretty coarse. It's, it's a bat, um, it's not a roving and it is combed in kind of one direction. It is still kind of like very like coarse and that's good because it'll, the needle will catch on it better, but you can see like it's kind of going in that direction. So I don't want to roll like this cause it's going to be harder to roll, even though it'll probably make more sense. If you roll up like this, but kind of on a diagonal, you're going to get the, kind of that base for the tail. And like three and a half inches. So I just kind of like roll it up. If you just want to roll it up regular, you can do that too. I don't know. I just, the reason why I do it like this is then it's, there'll be less wool up here and more wool down there. So that's my theory. I'll put these guys right here so we can still kind of look at them. And I'm gonna try to make this like pretty, like um, dense. But right now, I'm going to stab this so it's almost like, almost like flat. Even though I told you not really to do that. Um, and then I'm gonna keep going around. And then lots of times with making like little like this what I'll do is we kind of keep going around stab like you know ten times turn it so when I do that lots of times it's gonna grow in length like really long and skinny if you want to shorten up your tail a bit you can work this way. So right now I'm just kind of working on this end and leaving this end fluffy because I want to attach it. And sometimes when wool is this like thin, I feel like it doesn't um, always get super dense. So just keep turning it and poking it. And then what I'm gonna do is I want the end to be like a different color. So you could have like black on the end or white on the end. Um, I'll put a little black on the end. I'll have a little black at the end of this tail. I'm just kinda kinda fold it over a little bit. All right. Then I'm gonna place it right in here. 
and then I will add maybe kind of attach it a little bit like this. Kind of roll it. Zoom in a little bit. And also this will help with like thickening the end so it won't be like so like floppy. And you can make it as like, um, like fuzzy as you want, if you want to kind of make it look like more natural, or you could just really, like kind of what I'm doing right now is it, there's almost like a hard line. All right, so we've got like about a half an hour to go, so it's like perfect timing. Like I said, I'll put this up so you can watch it. And then I'll kind of make a little. Video and put it up for on YouTube as well. So lots, like I said, like lots of times I'll work this way. And then what that what will happen is that the, when I work this horizontally like this, it will shorten the the tail. Okay, so I'm gonna test it out to see what, what it looks like. And then I might do a little bit more poking. So I always kind of like this on the back, but that's quite like long enough. So I'm gonna pull a little bit of this off. Ooh. I don't know what, it, Jessica says, final trivia is what is the top speed of a Greyhound? I don't know. So you can do a couple of things. If you want to, you can put it right back here on, this, on the bottom. You can have it kind of stick up if you want. I think it kind of looks funny if you do that. <laughs> um, I kind of have it go off to the side a little like diagonal or you can have it like this and curl around. Totally up to you however you want to do it. Or sometimes however, however it just kind of comes out. So I'm going to attach here, and then I'm actually going to attach it through here. I'm actually going to attach this way too, because I want it to really stay there. If you want a little looser, you can totally, you don't have to go all the way through. So I'm going to attach it this. You can also, same thing, if it's too loose here, just you can just fill in. Just fill in. last thing um, is the heart and then I'll show you if you do want to add a little pause you can do that too but for the heart uh, the little white heart um, I'm going to make take a little bit of wool and then you're going to kind of fold it so you can kind of overlap it a little bit and it's about the size of 
gosh, maybe like a little smaller than a dime. It's not very big at all. And then I'm going to felt it a little bit on my foam and then I'm gonna put it on my, on my dog. So any needle is totally fine. So I'm just gonna just make like a little bit of a circle. If you wanna kinda of start to turn it into a heart on here, you can, but you don't have to. Just don't felt too much because it'll go right into your foam. Also too, like if you notice, I have like a lot of colors on here, like um, from working. If you just take those and pull them off and clean them up every once in a while so that it doesn't, um, so the, the fibers on your, on your foam don't mix in with your project. Okay, so whatever side you like better, to you and there's lots of little like fuzzy bits so what I like to do sometimes is pull around and kind of stick them back like that and just had it kind of laying on there same thing, I like to do go around the edge first. And then for the center, I poke down. And you just kind of you're drawing that heart on there. And if it's too big, you can poke from the sides. And if you're feeling like, oh, like this one area, I feel like this one side of my heart is a little too like skinny. You can always just add a little bit more. I think I will add a little bit more. It really like, kind of jammed down the middle there. If you want to have pause, um, I feel like it's just easier, especially the, like a first project that like not having the pause is better, but you can do a couple little things if you want. Um, you can make really just cute little paws using like a little ball. make like a little ball and then oop, oop, I'm attached to something um, you can like attach to the bottom like this you can make a little paw like that you could also do I'm gonna zoom out here you could also do you could roll up like a little tic tac if you wanted to And you could add like little paws, like you know, almost little legs or anything like that. You could do it that way too. I'm going to add like a little, like two little legs on there. So that's kind of like step 2.0. So if you like to, to do this and you made this and you like it and you want to go to the next step, um, on thir next Thursday, so I'm gonna do a shameless plug. Um, <laughs> next Thursday at, uh, on the 20th 
and Norwell, I'm gonna be making a, the the other puppy that's on my website. I'm gonna be making that there if you, if you are interested. Um, so that's gonna be in real live person. So so it's. Um, so that's a good way to learn, but this is just a perfect way to learn too. So um, lots of dogs going on here. So there's lots of different ways if you want to make little um, paws if you wanted to. If you're having trouble, if you're trying to get this to stand up and it keeps flipping over, um, maybe even use your bigger needle. You want to go all the way around and you're just kind of making you want to just make it nice and flat. I'm actually going to make my, do my skinnier one because I want to leave big holes. I don't want like big holes. See, it left these like huge holes. If you want to make something flat, I'm just going to kind of keep poking it. Okay, but so it's really nice and flat. And then if you're noticing that like they're keeping like flipping over or something like that, figure out where like the lumpy part is and just poke that down. Just poke that down. All right, so now I'm gonna kind of keep going around and then we do have a little time. So I will actually, you know, I'm gonna put two little paws on the bottom. We'll see how it works. We'll see how it looks. And if you like it, cool. If you don't, you can just rip it off. So I'm just gonna do the two little like ball like the two little balls on the bottom. So I'm gonna roll this up. So you can make like a little um ball like this and you can also like take your sorry I'm just like so close up take your hands and go like this and that kind of turns it into a ball um it also kind of gets it a little bit felted when you do that um so I'm just going to take two little And then I'm just gonna put them on the bottom. Now, when you do this, it might tip a little bit, so you could um, kind of futz with it a little bit if you wanted to. Also, um, they're just kind of for decoration, so they don't have to be super felted. So it's really just like the teeniest little ball. It's just kind of like for decoration. So I'm just going to put right here, attach it. Oh, cool. Well, to, and I was thinking too, if Michelle wants to, she can choose which dog she likes the best too. That's what I was thinking too. If this one isn't the one she likes, she, she can, Michelle, you can choose which one you want. <laughs> Is that okay? <laughs> You can do a little paw like that if you wanted to, just have it like kind of sticking out the front there. Or I'll show you how to do the other one. Usually it just kind of make like a little leg. So you just kind of like roll it up. And then Probably, I'm gonna rip this one off, but just to show everybody how to do it. And just 
to make like more of like a leg with a paw. So once again, I go work on the sides. All right, so then there's a little fluff here. I'm going to There's like the little you know what's had like the little foot like kind of sticking out if you wanted to. And you can always add more too if you wanted to add more. So and it has like a little a little leg. So you can do that too. A couple different options kind of for you. And if you don't like it, just peel it off. <laughs> but don't like throw these parts away. Don't throw like if you tear something off, like if you're you don't oh, if you don't like your ear or something like that, don't throw it away because what you can do save this wall save this wall save all your little that you've like pulled off of here here's some eyes from something you can roll put it in the center so if i want to make another dog you can take those those pieces i just have like random little pieces here and it can act as the center. So you're recycling, you're saving wool, all sorts of good stuff. Just like a bit. So like, and then you won't see it because you'll be like poking away. Um, what does tend to happen is if the wool you put in the center is like super dense, you might break a needle, so just be careful. <laughs> just be careful. People break needles all the time because they are, they're really rigid metal and they're super skinny and they break all the time. Just always be very careful. So that's if you wanna make your weight dog. All right. Fix that. And then you can just kind of poke. So it looks nice and neat again. Okay, so we've got like 15 minutes. So if people have any questions or um, need, want me to review anything, I'd be more than happy to help um, people do that. So I'm just gonna keep like um, working on him, making him like nice and smooth. So the smoother you want your dog like I feel like a dog can be kind of fluffy but if you really want him to be like kind of dense and smooth you like that aesthetic you can I would use your um, skinny yellow needle and that's gonna leave a smaller mark it's also gonna get in between the fibers that have already been felted so it's going to really shrink your project down it's also going to get really um, dense um, and then it, it'll get smoother and smoother but I feel like your dog can be fluffy because I mean dogs have usually have fluffy hair so it's really up to you what you want and if you I was just saying like if you're all done you I mean and you love your project you don't have to kind of sit here but we'd be happy if you want to chat with us or whatever um, but we're not like holding you. You don't have to. You don't have to stay. <laughs> but we'd love to see um, your finished pieces. You can um, post them to the, the Facebook page. Or you can send me an email, and I can like totally. 
ghost them. It'd be really cute to sh see how everybody made their dog. I'd love to see that. It'd be really cute. Thanks, Jane. And I'll get, oh, oh you got an Amazon gift card. I will get that to you. <laughs> Thanks, Lisa. Um, I'm sure we'll see you soon, Lisa. Um, I'm just thinking too, um, as I keep poking, you're gonna notice that the this white wool is like sinking more into the brown wool. So you can always add a little bit uh, more white wool in there if you want. Thanks, Jill. Uh, yeah, so Amy's asking if she wants a faint pale brown stripe on the back of her white dog. Yeah, so we put a little bit of the brown wool. And sometimes what happens is you might have to do like a couple of layers to get it how you want it to go. So start with like a little bit and poke it in. And it might look like kind of weird. It might look like wherever you poke in, it's going to be a little bit darker. And like, so because all the wool is going to kind of come together where you poke. So it's going to be like a little stringy and then there'll be like a dot. So you might have to do like a little bit of brown and then maybe like put a little bit of white on there and um, kind of like layer it that way. Um, it's just going to take a little bit of like practice. Also what I like to do sometimes when I'm adding colors on over top of something is when I put it down, I don't go straight into the wall. So north and south, I go kind of east and west, and I just kind of work on the top, like that. And sometimes you won't get those like needle marks, because sometimes what happens is if you do, if you're just kind of poking in um, and you want it to be really light and faint, sometimes you'll get like a big like dot. So sometimes just working like this way Sorry, I'm moving the camera, it's like going crazy. Um, just going with your smallest needle and just working like that. That kind of helps, that kind of works like that. It just takes a little practice and kind of like figuring out what's like gonna work the best.
and you might put a little bit on and then there might be like some little like balder spots so you can always just kind of fill in. Oh, thanks Jessica, this was awesome. This was really fun. I'm glad that you could get everybody together to do this and um, it was fun having like the little trivia questions and everything too. It was great. That's great. Cute. Cute. All right. So there you go. You can make a whole lot of them. You can have like millions of little puppies all around your house. <laughs> so, okay. So I'm gonna, um, I'll stop this video and I will uh, just post it right to the page. So if you would like to watch it again, um, fast forward, rewind, all that jazz, that'll be awesome. And thanks so much. I appreciate you all um, joining us and this was really great. So I hope um, I hear from everybody again. Thanks, bye.